So this is a big deal because we're polluting our environment, right? This is a man-made product that's being put out into the ocean. Um, it's something that they may or may not be able to metabolize, and we don't know the ultimate of you know long-term effects of this. Um, it's not just a problem in the ocean. We also see this in our riverways with um, freshwater fish and, and other fish in the bays. Um, and so ultimately, if you know someone were to harvest one of these sharks that has um, cocaine in its system, we could potentially be re-ingesting. So anything a, a shark is eating is uptake into its muscle tissue. I am not aware of anybody that has tested or anybody, any shark that has tested positive in Texas. That doesn't mean it couldn't happen. Um, a couple years ago, they did detect a shark off of Florida that had eaten a brick of cocaine. Um, and with the the drug running that does happen off the Texas coast, it is very possible um, that this could happen. Um, I, like I said, I'm not currently aware of any shark that has already tested positive. So it's a pollutant in their habitat, right? And like I said, long-term, we don't know how that's gonna affect them, much less if we were to re-ingest it from them. Um, we don't know if it makes them more aggressive. We don't know if the cocaine and or any kind of pollutant in the uh, the water column could cause irritants in their gills so they can no longer breathe. I mean, there's a lot of things that could come into play here. Um, and it, But if we want to have healthy ecosystems, not only do we need to remove the pollutants and stop polluting our environment, but we also need sharks in our environment. So we're potentially damaging down the food web, not just from the pollutant, but causing an imbalance in our fisheries by having these sharks potentially be removed. For me personally, I feel very sad to see that it has become such an issue, especially in our Gulf waters. Um, I actually studied pollutants in freshwater environments for my master's, looking at EPA water quality criteria, along with like heavy metals and SDS, which is what causes your soap to foam. Um, so it's found in absolutely everything. And it's amazing the amount, the, the minuscule amount you need to affect the environment and to affect individual organisms. So it's gonna be interesting and, and I'm curious to see you know, where the research goes from this. It's something that we should probably start looking at in Texas as well. So we do a lot of shark research currently, um, all the way from just what species happen in our waters seasonally to movement patterns, to we actually do look at toxicology. Um, we look at are there PAHs, are there heavy metals, different types of, you know, contaminants that could potentially, Im you know, impact the, this population, and then ultimately come back to humans, right? So these species can act as indicators for a, a environment that's becoming degraded. And so we, we are testing for that constantly. Um, that is not Cocaine is not necessarily something on the, the normal test list. Um, we may need to add it, apparently. Um, but uh, because we're not producing it in Texas like they are out of Brazil from the, the report you sent, um, I'm less concerned about it coming in from like a factory runoff. I would be more concerned about bricks or something being floating and them ingesting it that way. We'll say um, while this is an issue to, to monitor, um, looking at our fishing practices and, and as a whole for the Gulf, so not just the U.S., but looking at, you know, involving Mexico and Cuba and anybody else that has fishing rights in the Gulf of Mexico is very important because that may actually be more of a threat to shark populations than cocaine being found in their system. Not to say cocaine in their system is a good thing. It's definitely not. Um, but that may, at least in our area of the world, be somewhat uh, secondary to overfishing.